Hey, what's going on? Today we are going to take a look at how we can use App Directory in Next.js version 13. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, I open up my Visual Studio Code and here I have a new Next.js version 13 application and I also have installed Tailwind CSS with it. So installing Tailwind CSS with the Next.js version 13 is just like the version 12 and nothing has changed but except one tip that i'm going to tell you in a couple of minutes okay the first thing i'm going to do in order to activate the app directory in next.js version 13 is is going to next.js config file and here i'm going to say experimental inside the experimental i'm going to say app dir and set it to true so by that, we actually activate the app directory functionality in Next.js version 13. So the next thing we are going to do is to create the app directory in the root path of our Next.js project. So I'm going to create app directory here. And in order to create a route here in the app directory, I'm going to create a file called page.tsx. And here I'm going to create a functional component and name it home page. And inside it, I'm going to say this is our home page now. So that's it. And let's run our server to see the result. So I'm going to say npm run, run dev. I want to click on the localhost 3000 to open up our browser and here we got an error which says there is a conflict between app directory and page directory so for every route every specific route in our application we have to have just one file either in app directory or pages directory so if I go back to our project here we can see that in pages folder we also have an index.tsx file which is going to be mapped to root route of our application. So we can have either pages.tsx here for the root route or index.tsx in the pages, pages directory here. In order to fix that error, we have to delete index file in the pages directory. So if I go back to my browser and refresh the page, we can see that the error is gone and we see this is our home page which correspond to the page.tsx file in the app directory. So I go back to my VS code. We can see here that we got a message here it says your app.tsx did not have a root layout. So we created app slash layout tsx and app slash head, head tsx for you. And you can see that Next.js automatically created these two files for us in the app directory. So if I go to the layout.tsx, you can see that it's just a functional component with a children prop here. So what is the layout? The layout share UI between pages in the app directory and every subdirectory inside the app directory. So let me show you what it means in action. If I here, so if I uh, create a p tag here, it says this is the layout. And if I open up my browser again, you can see that this is the layout in the root route of our application. And Next.js automatically wrap our pages with the layout files in the app directory. Okay, let me show you what happened in the layout file. You can see that here we have a children prop. Our page component here is going to be rendered as a children of this root layout file. And Next.js do this automatically for us. We just have to name our layout file to the layout.tsx file. It's a reserved file name, just like head and pages.tsx. We also have, I think, two more reserved file names, which are loading.tsx and error.tsx. So if we want to have a custom error page or custom loading component for our pages, we can have loading.tsx or error.tsx file respectively. Okay, next thing I want to do is to create an app bar component and use it inside our layout file. So in order to do this, I'm going to create an app bar.tsx file. And 
Note that the app bar.tsx is not going to be mapped as a route here. Only page.tsx is going to be mapped as a route. So it's just a regular component. And for the sake of time, I'm going to copy and paste some JSX for this component. And you can see that it's just a component with two link here and some couple of Tailwind CSS classes here. So let's apply this app bar here in our layout component. So if I go back to our browser, we can see the app bar component is rendered above our page. But you might notice that our tail CSS classes are not applied here. In previous version of Next.js, in order to apply our Tailwind CSS classes, we had to import our global.css file inside the underscore app.tsx. In Next.js 13, if we are using app directory, we had to import the global CSS file inside our root layout file. So if I import our global.css file inside the root layout file and go to our browser, you can see that some classes like phones and padding have been applied in our page, but other classes like background color classes and text color have not yet been applied. In order to fix this problem, we go to the tailwind.config.js file and you can see that here we say that for every file with this extension inside the pages folder and also in the components folder create a utility class that have been used in, in these files but not the uh, app directory here. So in order to fix this we just say that for every file with this ex extension inside the app directory create the utility class which have been used in these files. So if I save this and res also restart our server and, and go to my browser and refresh the page, you can see that now all of our Tailwind classes have been applied. And if I click on the products link here, we go to the slash products route, but we get a 404 error page because we haven't created slash products route yet. So let's quickly create the slash products route. So I go to the VS Code and here, as I said before, the routing system inside the app directory is directory based, which means we can't have two routes inside one directory, just one route, which is page.tsx. So in order to create slash products route, I, I have to create a folder named products. So I say products and inside the products, I'm going to create a page.tsx and Inside the page.tsx, I'm going to create a functional component and name it products page. And here I say just this is the products page. And if I go back to my browser here, you can see on the slash products route, we have this text here. This is the product page which is actually our page.tsx file in the products directory. And you can see that the root layout has also been applied to this route. And in fact, we can also have a separate layout file in addition to the root layout file in the app directory. So let's create a specific products page layout for this route. So I go back to the VS code and inside the products directory here, I'm going to create a layout file again. And inside the, this layout file, I'm going to create a functional component named products layout, which takes uh, children as a props and render it to the to its layout. So if I save the comp and go back to my browser here, you can see that in addition to the root layout, the products layout also has been applied to the product page. So in this way, we can have multiple layouts as we go further in our routing system. So now let me raise a question here. What if I want to have slash admin page, but I want a different app bar or better to say a different layout for slash admin pages, not this layout which is applied on our regular pages. So in order to better understand the problem, let me create slash admin route in our application. So I go back to the VS Code here and inside the app directory, I'm going to create admin directory and inside the admin directory, I'm going to create a page.tsx. And here I'm going to create a functional component, which I'm going to name it 
admin page. And here I'm going to say just this is admin page. So if I go back to our browser and go to the slash admin, we see that our root layout has been applied to the ad slash admin page, but we want to have different layout for this admin page. So how we can handle this situation? Well, this is where the Next.js route separation comes into play. With route separation, we can actually separate our routes and their layout in our routing system. So let me show you what I mean by this in action. I go back to the VS Code and here in the app directory, I'm going to create another folder named user but inside the parentheses. So I'm going to create a new folder and inside the parentheses, I'm going to say user. Note that in app directory, Every directory with its name inside the parentheses is not mapped to a route in Next.js routing system. It's just a separation of routes. Now let me show you what I mean by this. I am going to cut this product directory and paste it inside the user directory and also app bar head layout and page.tsx which are correspondent to our root route. I'm going to cut them again and paste them inside the user directory and then I'm going to restart our server and if I go back to my browser and refresh the page you can see that our root route is still in place and you can see that a directory with its name inside the parentheses doesn't affect the routing system it's just a separation of routes now we can have another directory called admin but the admin is inside the parentheses and Let's move the admin route here inside the this admin separation directory. And now we can change our layout here for the slash admin routes. I want to put a div here with just a couple of table CSS classes and inside it I say admin panel. Let's save this and open up our browser again and now we are going to slash admin route. You can see the admin panel here is here, but our table CSS classes are not applied because we have imported our table CSS classes inside the main root layout or of application, but inside the admin route, we doesn't use the root layout here. We have a separate root for slash admin route. So we have to just import our global CSS file here. And if I save this and go back to our browser and refresh, you can see that the Devon CSS classes are now applied to this admin layout. Okay, by now I have shown you that you can have multiple layouts for a routing system and how you can separate your routes and layout inside the app directory. Okay, before I finish this video, I wanna show you uh, one more tip and that is using dynamic routes in the app directory. So I go back to the VS Code and here in the product directory, I'm gonna paste a component name product card. And this is a component which takes a product as its props and then show its pictures and also its name and its price as well. Just that simple. And then I go to the product page here and replace this content with this, which is going to render a list of product cards. So the product here is going from the dummy content here. So if I go to the product, show you, just a list of products and each product just have an ID, uh, image URL, name and price, just that simple. And let's import the product card, which we just have imported to our project, to our project. And let's save this and go to the browser and then go to the products route. We can see that our list of product cards are rendered to our product page. So this is the scenario. We want to click on a product card and then the routing system takes us to the product page with the ID of the selected product. So let's do that. I go back to the VS Code and inside the products directory, I'm going to create another directory named ID inside the square brackets. This directory is a dynamic route with, a, with the ID 
as its parameter. So I'm going to create a page.tsx file inside this id directory. And inside the page, I'm going to create a functional component and name it to product page. And now we want to access to the id params here inside the product page. So in order to do that, we are going to define an interface for the props of this product page. So I'm going to say interface props. And inside that props, we are going to have a pram. And inside the pram, we are going to have an ID, which must correspond to the name of the ID here inside the square brackets. This ID is going to be a string. And here we are going to have our props, which is type props. And here we can have props.pram.id. So let's save this and go to the product card here and wrap our component with the link element. So I'm going to say link and set its href to a route for slash products slash the ID of our product. So I'm going to interpolate the props.product.id. And I go back to my browser to test it. If I click one, uh, one of these products here, cannot read properties of undefined. So I'm going to back, go back to my VS Code here and go to the product page here. Oh yeah. In the, inside the interface props here, we have to have params, not just param. So I'm going to add a s at the end of the param here and also here. Let's save this and go to our browser. So you can see that now we can access to the params here. And if I go back to our products and click on another products, we have access to this ID inside our page component. And now let me quickly review what we have done in the product page. In order to access to the params, we have to define an interface. And inside the interface, we have to have an object named params. And inside the params, we had an ID which correspond to the name of this folder ID here. And then we type our components props to the props here we have defined and then inside the component we can have access to the params object inside the props. So in this way we can have access to our params object. Okay I think that's it for today and in the next video I am going to show you how you can have multiple context API for specific routes in your routing system. So in order to get informed about my next video, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button. Bye bye.